Hi, this is Tom Stewart with Cleaning Business Today. Got my uh, partner, Liz Trotter, who's over on the other side of the screen. And we've got a special guest today, Matt Ricketts, who is uh, CEO and uh, I think he carries the title Chief Experience Officer of Better Life Maids of uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And um, I guess when we talked Friday, uh, the thinking was that we wanted to take uh, this discussion on Monday and get into the area of how you can create uh, public relations opportunities uh, to, you know, get more visibility for your business in terms of how you would contribute to uh, fighting infection and, and, and making uh, people's lives safer. But we also said that that was contingent upon what happens between Friday and Monday and a lot of things change over the weekends. And uh, after just looking at where we are today, we really felt that the most useful thing that we could do with this time is to uh, talk about how we can get more capital in our businesses because uh, a number of us have uh, voluntarily uh, discontinued operations. Some of us have discontinued or taken a temporary uh, shutdown in our businesses because of uh, state or, 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 or local uh, mandates and the prop prospect of others of us uh, having to do that, I guess, is, is, is looming. And regardless of that, there's a, a, what they would say, a diminution of income. We're losing some business because customers are, are uh, concerned about the virus. So you roll all that up, we're going to need some money to make it to the other side of the, um, of the valley, if you will. Um, with that being said, um, Matt, you want to share a little bit with our with our group what you've uh, what you've been working on the last few days? Sure. I, I mean, I put in the plan maybe two weeks ago, thinking that we were going to probably shut down um, at some point once there was community spread in St. Louis. So um, when I got the word that there was the first community spread of uh, the virus in St. Louis, and a doctor had been infected at one of our local hospitals, I made the decision that we were gonna we were gonna shut down. So. Um, you know, my, my thought processes on that is first off, you all are going to have to make your own decisions. But for, for me, it was first off, do no harm. I didn't want to be responsible for causing any, any hardship to any of my employees beyond just the work hardship, but causing them to be sick and, and potentially harming my, my customers. So that was one of the big decisions for me. It was a very hard decision to come to that because I think that there is help that we can provide. Um, and we are keeping our commercial accounts open that we serve uh, that have a lot of common spaces like our apartment complexes and things like that. But that is a fraction of my business. Um, so in advance of that, I began working with my creditors weeks ago. And at first they weren't that like happy to hear from me. Um, I remember I had negotiated my, uh, my lease on my vehicles to $150 a month, which is about half of what they originally were. And I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, that's that's better than what it was. You know, as long as I maintain some cash flow, I'm good. Uh, back to today, they got back with me after I, you know, panicked emailed them this weekend and said that deal's not even gonna work. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to scrap that. Like I'm I'm not paying you for four months. Uh, the president of that company called me personally today telling me how great of a customer customer I am and that he's happily giving us four months without paying on our vehicles. Um, which is more expensive than the lease on my building. So that that was good. Um, spoke to my landlord who I haven't spoken to in years. His son takes took over the business that uh, that he runs. and uh, they're giving us April uh, deferred and and honestly, that one I would pay no matter what because they've been so good to me and like I would make that payment because we're still on 10 years ago rent. You know, they haven't raised our price in 10 years. So I felt guilty even asking that. But I'm asking everybody. I went to I went down to fifty dollar a month leases on our copy machine, and I got that stuff deferred for for four months. The wash machines that do our laundry, two hundred dollars a month deferred um, for four months. I mean, I, so four months was my question. Nobody balked at four months because I think that they're all understanding that if this is shut down for thirty days, that's minimum. Cash flow is going to be affected much longer than. That. Another big thing that I did was before this was is I I changed all the rates on my workers comp. So like typically your rating is based on your payroll for work comp. But it can be rated differently. I'm not sure state by state how they manage risk. But for me in Missouri, they typically go by your gross payroll. Um, and so I lowered my gross payroll from 860,000 for my labor down to $500,000. So that 
means, first of all, that they're not going to have anything to do, uh, any payments on that for a while without even them doing anything special for me because I've already prepaid so much. Uh, and then I also put all my vehicles in storage starting April 1st. Um, so I can't drive them around, but uh, I wasn't planning on it anyway, unless we come up with some creative use for them, like delivery or finding some other pivot we could get to, which is an option, right? We, we have to think of anything. But right now, putting them in storage saves me. It takes them down from like, our rates are pretty high. We had some accidents from some silly stuff. So I, I would say that saves me... Uh, God, I want to say like 2000 a month and not paying auto. So, um, you know, just putting them in storage. And um, and I'm getting word from my insurance agent anyway that most of the agencies are not going to be canceling or most of the big insurance companies are not going to be canceling for non-payment. Uh, they've already started that in the restaurant industry. There are a couple weeks ahead of us in terms of hardship. Um, so, you know, those are those are some good strategies that, that are like, you know, top of mind. But as far as your personal finances go too, there's no shame in anything you have to do to, to make your money last. And my bank account, my bank account balances look pretty good right now. But if I were paying all my bills steadily, six months from now, I might not like this if this goes on, you know, if this goes on. I'm I'm making decisions to act as if I have to live off that money for a couple of years. I don't think it'll come to that, but I'm afraid I may not be able to pay myself. A regular check like what I was paying myself before for quite some time, even if we get things back and running. So personal bills, everything is up for negotiation, right? Like mortgage, we refinance that to a 30. But as soon as that gets done, we were out of 15 and, you know, paying aggressively to pay it off. Well, put it on a 30. I've never had a 30 year mortgage before, but I'm going to join everyone else in the low payment game. Um, and keep that as low as possible. I do want to come out of this with decent credit. So I do plan on continuing to pay that. After, if they're, but I think they're going to give deferrals to everyone on their mortgages. So I don't think that that's going to be something that's going to necessarily hurt our credit. Same thing with any other personal vehicle loans or anything else you have personal debts. Um, everything should be everything should be on the table. You should be thinking about contacting those lenders, letting them know the situation, where you're at, what you plan on being able to do, and and attacking that stuff right away. So that's that's the main thing, Tom. What were some other thoughts you might have to add to that? Yeah, you know, the whole credit thing in terms of, of, of credit history and, and your credit rating is, is interesting. And there's a school of thought out here that, you know, for the next six months or so anyway, we're all going to get a mulligan for this because when it's over, the banks are going to want to lend money to people that are, are credit worthy. And for the people that were like caught into this, you know, work in a lifetime, you know, unprecedented event, uh, Probably won't uh, won't uh, be as big a uh, uh, a black mark, if you will, as, as what it would be under other circumstances, because you're protected by the masses. Oh, Everybody's yeah. dealing with it. Um, Two things well, I thought of too. But go ahead. Just finish uh, it. No, I was I was uh, wondering what your thinking was about borrowing money and the, yeah. all the all the channels that are available out there now that that even even with things going south at the moment and, 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 and looking a little bit scary, there's a lot of different ways that, that you can borrow money. Is that something you've looked into? So, I mean, I'm getting every kind of predatory lending off from the world. I would avoid some of that kind of that kind of world. I think there's going to be some better opportunities. So, I mean, this is probably too, too late for a lot of you, but if you have stocks, two weeks ago, I liquidated about half of my portfolio and I wish I would have just sold everything. <laughs> just keep watching it go down and down. But so I liquidated about half of my portfolio and uh, basically money that had been worth $100,000, you know, two weeks before I got a check for $70,000. It was very, very painful. Um, but that's money in the bank. And, and I'm not saying everyone has that opportunity. That's money that I've been saving for years um, and, and didn't really want to have to touch. I mean, that's money I was hoping that when I was old, I would be spending and not when I'm 40, basically. Right. So. Um, liquidate assets. I would consider, you know, Facebook, you know, Facebook posting stuff that you don't need. But the other, the other thing I would do is, and have no shame in this, is if you if you are a W two employee of your business and you stopped paying yourself or plan to stop paying yourself, file for unemployment. I filed for unemployment for both my wife and Angela, and uh, I I have to hit pay myself every week and go in there and do it. But I have no shame. That'll be five hundred dollars a week 
um, you know, for each of us, right? So for some of you, you know, if you get your bills down low enough, that could make a significant impact in, um, in what you do. And if there's any more relief on that, I believe that there's going to be some more relief on that. We're going to see, um, you know, there, there is some negotiating, fierce negotiating between the tribes in Washington right now. And I think, uh, I think when this is all said and done, there's going to be some, some relief for the average guy that's going to, going to help them. But I, I can't make any promises on that. Uh, apply for the SBA lending. Me and Tom have both done that. He's got his accountant or his uh, accountant working on his. My life is a little simpler than Tom. I don't have like 15 LLCs. I just have a couple. And um, I was able to do my my financial statements and everything else pretty quickly just based on QuickBooks and my own, you know, reckoning of what stuff is worth, you know, what my house is worth and what, you know, how much equity we have and things like that. That SBA money is not going to be free. There's going to be some strings to that money, but at three and a quarter percent at 30 years is what it looks like. Um, it's cheap money and I'll take as much as they can give me. Um, it's a life, it's a lifeline to get reopened for, for some of us. It's more, it's more important than others. Uh, I don't know if Matt, Matt Andrews is on the call. He's a, he's a guy out in LA. I think he got a bridge, some sort of bridge loan that actually is helping him cover some really short term costs. Um, so there's some short-term money too. If you don't need the long-term, you know, 30-year, you know, bigger chunk like I'm looking for, um, I believe there is some short-term relief that'll help you make payroll. And I know we're all in different situations, right? Like so, um, typically I usually keep a lot of money on hand, cash on hand. But if you're in a different cycle of your business, you've been investing in it recently, and all of a sudden this hit, um, and you have less available to you that's going to be really important to, to jump on right now. Um, Tom, did you have any thoughts on the SBA lending what you, from when you did it? Um, well, we're still still in process. I kind of started it and looked at that and I just called my CPA and said, here, you guys figure this out because we've got several several legal entities that, that, that we do business under and it was, was a little bit of work. But when, when you did it, Matt, how long did it take to, to fill that out? maybe an hour or two. I mean, I don't remember. I stayed up on Friday night when I got off work and just did that and applied for insurance. It all was a blur. <laughs> it was a long night. I was, I know I finished around 11 o'clock that night, but I was, I think the unemployment honestly took longer than actually filling out the initial SBA uh, paperwork. And um, I'm going to follow up with them probably in the next couple of days and find out what else they need. Uh, I didn't feel like it was that burdensome. I'm going to check in on it you know, probably regularly to see where I am in the process. Liz, uh, what, uh, what are you hearing out there? Uh, well, pretty much the same thing. The only thing I haven't heard mentioned is lines of credit. Uh, a lot of people are talking about if they have a line of credit, what are they doing with it? And most people I've heard are trying to go ahead and hold onto that money and use it uh, while they have the opportunity. Um, sure. So spend that money first before your cash because they oftentimes freeze lines of credit in situations like this too. So that what do you think about that, Tom? Spending line spending lines of credit first. You wanna if you have a line of credit right now, my advice would be to to max it out, take all the money out of the line of credit and put it in a in a checking account. Yeah. And if you really if you really want to be safe, put it in a checking account in a bank other than the one that you you uh you know, exactly. um, but the interest rates right now should be really low. So, you know, in a few months, if you don't need it, you can put it back. But uh, when things start getting really tough, especially if the banks get squeezed, they uh, will pull lines of credit if, if, if they need to, to make their uh, balance sheet look good. Yep. Yep. Those lines of credit, even on your home equity lines and stuff like that, guys, if you have home equity lines of credit, they can freeze those. So, Take the, write, write a check to yourself now before the, before the banks start really fearing that people are are, are not going to pay them back. Um, you know those those things are are only as good as the faith that the bank has in you at the moment. You know, it's how about, how about oh, sorry, Tom, go ahead. No, you go ahead, Liz, please. I was going to change the subject, so please. Um, the Federal Reserve, which is a separate entity in our federal government who typically loans money to 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 the banks, you know, and the, and the financial institutions. Uh, 
made a uh, statement this morning at eight o'clock Eastern that they're going to start making money available directly to small and medium sized businesses. And that is, that is unprecedented. I didn't hear that. Exciting. Very, very vague on the details. Uh, and the thinking is they probably still administer that through the banks. But as of this morning, nobody, nobody, nobody really knew, but you know, Back in 08, they talked about helicopter money where the Fed was just flying around, you know, kind of like an analogy of throwing money out of a helicopter. That's kind of kind of where we, we, we are now. But back in 08, where that money was going to financial institutions and, you know, basically Wall Street, if you will, this is supposed to be their uh, way of getting money to Main Street. So, you know. The, the, the thinking is the underlying economy is good. If you had a good business before this happened, you should have a good business once we make our way through this, uh, you know, call. This is, this is the new definition of the valley of despair, uh, how deep it's going to be and how long it's going to be till we get to the other side. We don't know, but uh, there's going to be a lot of money out there. And, you know, I, I say we scoop it up and, 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 and hold on till we can get to the other side. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of this happened a lot faster than than I, you know, I'd been working on this for for a while. And, and you know, my wife, uh, she's like, I've never seen you get nervous before. Like, because I, you know, I did this I did this Iron Man last year. And she's like, you weren't even nervous when you were like, you're not like, you know, like it was like 50 something degree water to go swim that day. And I don't love to be cold or, you know, didn't I didn't even like appear nervous that day. I was internally but I was giving her signs of nervous guys. It's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be worried about this, but you can't freeze up. Like you got to keep moving and keep, keep hustling. Like the, the, the problem I see with a lot of people when stuff like this happens is, is that they just freeze and they stop and you can't stop whatever you're doing. You got to keep researching everything you can keep finding out as much as we're sharing ideas. I mean, what I'm doing all day is just searching through the news to find anything that, is a ray of hope. And like Tom, I hadn't heard that from Tom. So it's good to be having these conversations. I had not heard this about the federal reserve releasing funds to, to small, medium sized businesses. Um, I'm going to be reading about that. So, you know, you're going to have to become an expert on things you never thought you were going to be an expert on by the time this is done. If you're going to, if you're going to pull through this, it's going to be, it's going to be because you worked hard through this and, and did a lot of things right. So but that, that's my biggest advice is don't, don't stop moving. Yeah. I, it's, and on the flip side of that, I do want to say don't don't get – so what Matt is saying is move forward. And he also said that you have to get a lot of things right. But don't worry that if you don't get it right, you're screwed because that's going to keep you from moving forward. So you still got to keep moving forward. If you don't know what to do, pick, pick, and pick the best option that you – it can research, find out about, and, and, and move forward with that. I do have two more things yeah. that I've heard people talk about that I look through my notes here. One is, do you guys, have you heard anything about credit cards? If people have credit card debt, is there going to be any kind of forgiveness? Is Will they be able to um, do anything with their payments there? Has anybody heard anything there? I already told Tom my thoughts on this. I'm spending credit yeah. cards first. Everything's going on a credit card right now. I, Cash is king, man. Like, keep your cash. That's my thoughts. Tom, your thoughts? I haven't heard anything about credit cards. You know, it wouldn't surprise me that there's not going to be something happening there that's going to um, forgive some of that that debt, if you will. But 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 I don't know. Um, I'm I'm not bashful about borrowing money, but you know, having interest that you sure. know. Being, you know, whatever it is, is a bit, uh, you know, I would, I would, I would go for the cheaper money first. How about that? Um, you know, I understand that there's a lot of discussion about, you know, letting people on the personal side, you know, giving them forbearance on their, their personal mortgage where they can push those payments out and, and money's money. So, you got personal cars or personal, you know, house payment or, you know, if you're renting, whatever, everything that we've talked about here was kind of in the context of your business, but look at it on your personal side too, because if you can save 
money there for, for, for down the road that uh, at, at the end of the day, you're just taking money out of one pocket and putting it in, in the other. So, you know, save it in your personal side too. Even as, even as high as interest rates are going to be though, especially so, and even as, as strong as my cash position is, I moved everything out of my checking account and put it into savings so that every dollar goes on my, goes on my uh, overdraft protection first. So I have an overdraft on my, on my, on my checking account. So I'm spending that money first, uh, putting everything this month on anything else business wise and whatever in a credit card to, to preserve capital just to see what happens. And I can, re I can circle back to those and pay them off if the SBA lending comes through. But if I want to make, make my cash last longer, even at a little higher percentage right now, I mean, I, I'm sort of of the mindset is that a lot is going to be, a lot is going to be wiped clean from this. Um, and, and, you know, if we do get the SBA funds quicker than we like, then we pay those quick, that we pay those down at the, at the cheaper, at the cheaper interest rates. Um, and, you know, those are, those are all topics for the future. Right now I'm in capital preservation mode. Just, I want, cash to be sitting in the bank as long as possible and spending, you know, money with, with credit or lines of credit as quickly as I can. So if you have a line of credit, like I said, spend that money first before you touch any cash. And if you haven't talked to your bank yet, when I say your bank, the people that have the checking account that you put your deposits in and, you know, do your payroll checks and so on and so forth, you want to do that now. And you want to ask what programs do they have? A lot of banks are putting in programs for small businesses. And, you know, I heard of one today that if you ask for $50,000, they would give it to you on a 10 year amortization with an interest rate locked in at prime at the time of closing, which means, you know, you'd be getting a dirt cheap, uh, you know, fifty thousand dollar loan that you could pay off over ten years, pay off sooner. Than you wanted to. I need to find out about this. This is good. Yeah, um, those are the kind of things that are that that are out there, and I just think it's going to. I see. We're going. To, I think we're going to be seeing more of that. The more that the, the federal government gets involved, this whole thing with uh, what the Federal Reserve said this morning is going to. The more money is out there, they're going to have to do something with it. And unlike last time, if it doesn't get to small businesses and if it doesn't get into to, to the pockets of people who are going to be spending it, there's going to be, you know, it's going to happen. You know, it's going to be spread around more evenly this time. Oh, one thing we didn't talk about is auto bills and ACHs. Um, I was so, just gonna, that was my second thing that I was going to bring up. Okay, ask your Absolutely. question. Go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's not a question. Just one more thing I wanted to bring up is we went through our, our checking account and we just stopped all of those so that I have to personally pay them now. And so I'm recommending that to everybody. Um, I talked to one person today and if some of them are so hard to stop that he just canceled that account, opened a new account, and he's now depositing his money in there. And all of that stuff is going to, you know, it's going to hit his He's setting up a um, a system where it will auto pay from another account, but it's going to hit him first. It'll warn him so that he can pay it. So that's, that's a, another strategy. That's one thing, and that's really good. Um, also, if you aren't going to go that extreme, you can you can talk to your bank about all the ACHs you have. Like I have um, leases from a similar company that Tom has for some of our vehicles, and so. I, I called my bank and I said, all right, I want ACHs from this company to be blocked. And normally they would charge you a $40 fee to do that. And they're waiving the fees on all that stuff right now. So I block, I blocked ACHs from all the big ACHs that I have. So I don't even know what ACH stands for, probably automatic checking something, whatever. But it is, it's a common term used for, for one of your vendors to pull money out of your account on a, on a regu semi-regular basis without even you approving those things. And like Liz says, I'm writing checks. Like I'm, and probably will for the rest of my life. Like this is <laughs> gonna change the way that my financial systems work forever. Like, I don't know that I'll ever be comfortable with an ACH ever again. I'm going to like grandpa Warbucks mode where like every dollar's gotta hurt. Cause like all this, like all this comfort in like, oh yeah, there's money there. Like it's only a thousand dollars. It's only a thousand dollars. And then you start, then you start really thinking about that now when like money's not coming in. It's like, 
damn, that's a thousand dollars. So that's all got it. That's all got to get blocked. So if you have some of those big ones, block that stuff um, right now. Stacy was asking what uh, Dana Sutton was asking what bank I use. I have two banks. Um, I use uh, U.S. Bank, which is a you know decent sized large bank. I know maybe Tom and I had uh, used them because they were on the West Coast as well. And then um, I use a local credit union here um, for for some business stuff too that has been good to me. So. Um, those are those are my banks, Dana. And um, yes, the answer to your question is banks can block your auto debits, Robin. Yeah, and I don't know if all banks can, but and how how to go about it. Um, but you can definitely it's your money. <laughs> you can make yeah. it happen. You can just take more money. Accounts if they yeah, I'm, I didn't know they were waiving fees though, because typically they would charge you for that. So that's really awesome that they're doing it for free now. Yeah. I don't think they have a choice because I think they're getting so many calls and getting hit by people that are in Armageddon. Because the guy originally was like, normally it's a $40 analysis fee. And I was like, son of a gun. And he's like, we're waiving that right now. I was like, oh, good. Because like, if I need any more fees from you guys right now, analysis fees, right? Like that's that's all things that I'm going to be like, I never look at that stuff. Now I'm going to be like, analysis fees, another bank's getting, getting my business because that's some BS at this point. Like, Everything matters. Every dollar is going to matter. Um, well, I guess my analysis fees are going to go down because I'm not going to be writing that many checks next month. But um, you know, that's the bright side. I guess the, the banks aren't going to get an analysis fee for all the checks that I normally write. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, the, and then also on your on your a lot of your auto debits and stuff like that. I mean, if you can, you can. If if you can't easily get a hold of them. This is not necessarily like best practice, but you could go in like, let's say Infusionsoft, which is a company I don't particularly like very much right this second. You could go in there and change your credit card number so that it like, you know, like looks like a good credit card or a bad, you know, or put a bad, you know, expiration date or something like that in. So then when it pings, uh, you know, you know, then, you know, it, it won't cancel right away and they'll, they'll be working with you to try and get a hold of you. And that'll make them start calling you too when they're not getting their money and then you can renegotiate some of this stuff with them if you just don't have the time right now for some of this. But I, even even Infusionsoft, I mean, I would call anything. Um, I mean, you can't cancel some stuff. Some stuff is just like your phones, your business software. You can't cancel that stuff. But a lot of them are, are working on ways to make their software more fair and just paying maintenance fees and things like that for some period of time. So um, everyone's going to hurt. You know, and I, I hate to say that because Tom's a software vendor too, but everybody sh everybody's sharing in the pain right now. You know, and bottom line is, if you're paying money to somebody, you need to contact them and find out how can they help. Are there things? Can we push it out? Can we just pay a little bit later? There, there might be some options. Another thing is, this is terrible. I'm, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but one of the things I do regularly is I will set up an automatic payment that is above what I know I'm going to pay. And so I will routinely run a credit somewhere. Like right. the power bill. I pay $250 to my power bill. And right now I've got a, a $1,200 credit there. Yay, that's money back to me. I'll take that check, please. So I, I had a few of those that I'm like, <laughs> send me my cash. Um, and so if, if you do that too, Get your cash, right? Don't just let your credit sit there. I mean, sometimes it's it's really convenient, but mm, take take my money now. Uh, I did have one more um, thing that I just remembered. Um, um, uh, a phrase that is going around that I don't think a lot of people um, have understanding around, and I thought you two gents might know, is the phrase force majeure. So talking about when there is something like this that's happening and um, hitting mostly around insurance and that kind of stuff. What do you guys have to say about force majeure? I'm not sure how it applies directly to the way I do business, but you know, certainly Tom has a lot of contracts where it probably applies to you know a lot of different things. I mean, he writes a lot more contracts than I do, so he could probably speak to that better than I could. Yeah. yeah. I can give you a, 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 a layman's definition. You know, most contracts have a have a, have a term in there uh, that basically 
this is the deal that we have unless the world changes as we know it and I can't, you know, do this, in which case we need to sit down and, 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 and have a discussion. I think generally that's, uh, that, that's what it is. It's kind of that loophole that, you know, this is, this is our agreement, but you know, there, there, there could be some things that would happen in this world that would require us to do something different than, than what's in this contract. Yeah. I think we're there. I think, yeah. I don't think, uh, I mean, like I said, I, I've been watching this for a while and I thought, okay, like nobody was going to do anything as, as you know, I, I'm actually really happy in some ways that we're actually taking it pretty seriously. Like, you know, a lot of municipalities are taking it pretty seriously because if we're all in this together and we're all like having to suffer the same thing that we might have to shut down, we might have to not operate it's almost better. It takes the pressure off the decision to do the right thing or for, or what you believe to be the right thing. I don't want to tell anyone what is the right thing for the business. I'm sorry to say it like that. Um, it just takes, it took the pressure off me when I knew that everyone else had to do the same thing. Um, called city hall and found out which of my contracts I could serve, which one, which of them they really didn't want me to be at. And, um, and they were very helpful and accommodating in what they wanted and what they didn't. And your municipalities are going to be different. You know, some, some places are, are not, but, Force majeure is in effect, man. Like this is this is a this is a act of God that we could not predict of, of any uh, of any proportion. And uh, I think we're like Tom said. I think the economy has strong fundamentals, um, but there is going to be there's going to be a little bit of suffering if we don't if we don't help each other out in the next you know and, and help each other out being you know, some relief in, you know, terms from our vendors, from the government, financial institutions that we do business with. Um, it, you know, it could be a lot worse if they don't get involved. So that's why you can definitely think that clause is in effect. I don't know that I would have enough legal expertise to argue that with them, but um, I would definitely I'd throw it out there, see what happens, you know. For the conversation, again, everything right now is, I think, have the conversation, ask the questions, what can you get? You don't know. Not like well, a lot of people are not even thinking to ask the banks. What do you have going on? What what opportunities are there for me in my business? I'm a small business. How can you help me? That's a, a great question. A ask that question of everybody. Who can help you? How? And the people that you're going to be asking that question of are being asked that question like every minute of the day. So they're prepared for it. And, you know, you're not, you know, you're not even negotiating a lot of times. They're just, you know, like, you know, they're trying to give, give you what it is that, 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 that you're looking for so that they can move on to the, to the next one in some cases. It's a different, different dynamic. We're, we're protected by the masses, you know. Normally you call up somebody you owe money to and say, hey, you know, I need you to help me out. The thought process is, that you know you screwed up you're a bad business operator you're a bad risk okay well it looks like we got a troublemaker here but that's not that's not where it is now i mean they're, they're expecting it they're used to it they're dealing with it you know through all day long and um you know with 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 with, with almost without exception you know i don't think there's a single person we've talked to that hasn't uh, been willing to, to to help in some way and that's that's a great point is that Basically, basically, the banks own you up until this point. We kind of own the bank at this point, right? Because, oh. right? They're they're all they're all so hosed. If they here's here's the conversation I had with 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 one of my lease with one of my leasehold cars with my cars was just like because at first they were kind of being a little bit stubborn, and I was just like, I was like, I'm your best bet to pay these things back, like because I'm going to be strong coming through this. I'm a smart business owner. I've been successful at this for 12 years. I've got a lot of money in the bank, but I'm not paying it to you right now, right? So, so when this is over and I'm running again, I'll be more willing to, to untie that money and, and start sending off checks. But but until that day is that I'm operating again, you're not seeing a dime. And you know why? Because I know that every other person that does business with you is calling you too, looking for the same thing. I'm not alone here in this. I'm not I'm not some sad sack that's like just trying to tell you a story. This is this is everyone is going to be going through this and everyone is going to be suffering equally. You are not you are not beat down in any way. Like like, dude, take this advantage to beat them down. This is not you being, you know, weak. This is about you leveraging the strength that you have, the strength to negotiate. So don't be afraid to ask. I mean, that's I, 
I, I can tell you, I know that my wife was embarrassed by some of these conversations. I was telling, I was telling her to call her mortgage and do these things. And she was embarrassed. I was like, cause it was two weeks. It was like two or three weeks ago. And she's like, no, like, and they were like, the banks were not even like, they weren't even clued in yet. Like I was on this like weeks ago and she was just like, what are you doing? And, uh, you know, she was getting nervous. I was like, trust me, we're getting ahead of like a global crap storm that is coming. That is going to hit us in the face. Like we're, we're renegotiating everything. And, and, you know, and now I'm already done with a lot of it and I don't even have to wait on hold. I tried to call one place today and I held for like an hour before I got through to them. And so I already did all that without the hold times for most of this stuff. So the downside is now you're going to be on hold for hours because everyone else is lining up too, but they'll, they'll get, they'll get to you eventually. Maybe they'll even do it by email. But the upside is the rules keep getting more generous every day. So you I might not even be that good anymore. I've renegotiated them twice. Yeah, you might. Yeah, you might be on the phone, you know, being on hold an hour tomorrow, getting a sweeter deal than you have already. True. It's all true. Do we have any questions, Liz? I don't see any. Did it? Over there, I think everybody's just taking it in and. And, and glad for some direction. And uh, I, I think a lot of people are more hopeful just having the conversation that, okay, so I'm not just going to get hosed. There's, there's, there's a chance here that I'm going to make it out of this. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you people they're allowed. my biggest advice is whatever you have to do cash wise, pay your people, their last checks, their PTO, their, their, all the money you owe them. Do not stiff your people, whatever you do. That's the thing, like, because that'll shut you down. That that that'll kill you. So, you know, hopefully you have the cash on hand to do that. Um, Tom, would you agree? Like, that would be oh, that would be absolutely. Because on the other side of this, you know, it, it's gonna. You know, I see this looking a little bit like cat herding because you're gonna get your 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 client. You kind of need to get back in the fold, and you're gonna get your cleaning technicians, you know, back and. It's not going to be like just turning on a light switch. That's going to, you know, be be a be a process. And mm -hmm. you know, you you want to stay in touch with your people too. You know, have part of your communication plan. You need to, you know, make sure that that you have regular communications, just kind of kind of checking up on people. So when when things start coming back around, they're going to be there. Yeah, that's those are the people like those people you can't negotiate with. They. They got to get paid. They got to get every dollar you owe them. And if you can help them in any way through this and whether it's just support or, or words, but that last check has to be to the T not a penny, need, not a penny can be missing. Um, you know, they need it more. They need it more than you will ever need it probably. So that's the only thing I can tell you is if, you know, if money's tight for you, just imagine what it is for them. Yeah. Figure out, figure out how to get that last, that last paycheck in there. Cause I know a lot of us, you know, when, when times are, are good, we're spending money ahead of time a little bit and we're, and we're oftentimes, you know, maybe only a few days ahead on payroll. So a shutdown like this is definitely scary. So figure that out though, whether you, I mean, whatever you got to do to, to make that last payroll, that's gotta be, if you're going to, if you're going to come back, that's gotta happen. And I guess there's legislation. I haven't seen it in the last couple of hours, but we're still being, um, you know, hammered out in, 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 in the Senate. And it's my understanding that there's some monies that would go to employers to help keep people on the payroll. Yeah. And if, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what all the details are, but as I understand it, 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 it could be retroactive going back to the, to the beginning of March. So even if you had to uh, furlough people, you could actually bring them back and put them on the payroll. And if you kept them from some period of time, then that actually becomes a grant. And grants are really cool because you don't have to pay those back. It's like a gift. And um, we're going to be getting more make a list of all the things that we find that are available that are that we can actually link to, even if it's just articles that they could read on this financial stuff. Maybe a sub a sub kind of Reddit of the of the links you already are doing. I'll try and find some too that I've been get it get it to us. The tricky part about that when people are writing about legislation that hasn't become law yet, you're just kind of yeah, you're you're, you're kind of chasing. Nothing. Sometimes it just gets people gets people too excited or it gets people too stressed out and it just changes anyway. Yeah, so it's true because a lot of the good things I heard initially that were going to happen were not in the initial Republican bill. 
uh, as far as like, you know, higher unemployment rates and things like that. So they didn't make the initial bill, but you know, so that, that all, it's all, again, it's all subject to negotiation, subject to change. And everyone has different opinions on the best ways to help the economy. I just have to believe they're all acting in good faith and what they think is the best. And, and hopefully it becomes things that help the little guy. Cause we are all in the grand thing little like American airlines drives me crazy. Delta, Delta specifically, they, they did a $3 billion stock buyback last year, and now they're going to be begging for money from the government. $3 billion of stock last year. They could have had money on hand that could have probably weathered this, but it went to shareholders instead of instead of keeping money on hand for a rainy day because nothing ever bad happens to the airlines. I was a pilot for, for a decade, and I went through two economic disasters in 9-11 and 2008 in that industry. Nothing ever bad. Nothing ever bad happens in that industry. So I, I just couldn't even believe that they're asking for a bailout, and they're gonna they're gonna be first. They're gonna be first in line, most likely. So I'll let us wrap up. I know Tom. Like, no, I'm, I'm, you got me. You got me thinking because I'm 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 agitated now because <laughs> you know their stock like. A month ago, it was trading at fifty-seven, and now it's down twenty-two. So that 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 drop, that or that, how many billions of dollars was it? Three three billion dollars stock buy, stock buyback last year. Yeah, like two of it, they just put a match to it. Just kind of went up into to money yeah, having twenty-two from fifty-seven. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's about so, what it's worth right now. It's like from sixty to twenty. And I and I hate to say it. I mean, I have so many friends that are in that industry and people that I care about, but it is. It's it's just a greedy industry, and most of the and most of the money goes to the executives, and and you know for me for them to be bailing out the airlines, the only way that I'm okay with that is if they're if they're going to promise to keep the people employed, like it cannot go to it cannot go to parachutes for executives to to jump out of this ship, you know that that's the stuff that we can't allow, and you know whatever let's not get too much into that but you know liz i've got a word i could call him but i'm gonna i'm holding back good job tom good job <laughs> Maybe overly dana wants to know tom are you still cleaning homes and at what percentage do we lay people off um we we just continued uh our residential cleaning operation friday and it was one of the most difficult business decisions, probably the most difficult business decision ever made. I'm still kind of, kind of working through the, the the morning process on that. Um, at what percent do you lay people off? I'm not, I'm not sure. Anybody know what, what that might mean? I think she's saying like, what percentage of your revenue? Like, do you, I mean, I, I just look but at it. I mean, I go ahead. No, go ahead, Matt. I, I think that that's what it is. The how much loss? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm running at ten percent right. Well, maybe fifteen percent right now. I don't even know yet. I because the commercial businesses I have normally do fifteen thousand to sixteen thousand dollars a month, but I think that they're going to want to scale back their their scope of work as well because they're closing common areas. They're closing amenities at these apartment complexes that we do. Um, but I'm going to keep them running because. I mean, honestly, I'll probably go clean them if other, I've got a couple of employees on those. But if, if it comes down to it to keep those contracts and somebody needs a sick day, I'll go out and clean. It's been a decade. I'm probably terrible at it, but I'll go clean. Like, cause I want to keep those contracts. Those are, those ones are, those are my gravy every month. I, you know, I, I appreciate those kind of big checks coming in. Um, so I'll do what it takes to keep those going. So I don't know. For for me on the residential side, it was more of a, a do no harm, less so about you know how much percentage of revenue. I didn't make it. I didn't make the decision on that. I don't even know what the answer is because I don't even know what my fixed costs are right now because I've cut so much of them. Norm normally, I would be able to tell you. I'd go to P and L and be like, my fixed costs are this. Like right now, I'm hoping my fixed costs are like five or six hundred bucks. Like right, just like Tom's software, uh, the internet. Uh, the phones, like some stuff that I can't get rid of because I'm going to still have to call customers back when this is over and, you know, and I need internet and, you know, I'm going to be at my office. I want to have the internet, you know, because I'm going to work from home because I got three kids homeschooling right now. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep this place. So, um, but you, Dana, I don't know the the right answer is, you know, for, for that question. I think that the, the question probably is better is, 
any dollar in is is money in at this point, right? It's just it's just not going to necessarily cover your fixed costs. Yeah, our our decision to shut down the residential operation really wasn't about you know, the, the, the loss of clients that we had, you know, up to that point, it was more about just, you know, we weighed the risk and the benefit of it. And, you know, I found myself having this discussion several times over the last few days, you know, hygienic cleaning actually reduces the chance of the spread of infection and, 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 and it's valuable. But on the other side of the scale, you've got this uncertainty of how many people are running around with the virus that are contagious that you don't even know it because they're asymptomatic. And if you're cleaning a public space that everybody's in like an elevator, then, you know, in my mind, that has to be clean. It's irresponsible not to, but if somebody is sequestered in their home, then we might be in a point, and I guess it was my judgment that we are that, you know, they just need to lock the door and not anybody in, even the cleaning service. And if we can give them some pointers on how to clean high touch areas and they can take care of that themselves for the next few months. And it could be exceptions. I mean, there's people who, who need help and all kinds of stuff. So I'm not saying that's 100% either, but that was that was kind of our thinking as to how we got to that decision. So, so this isn't, we probably can't cover this ground today, but I think this would be an interesting discussion for next time is, what are you going to do with your downtime? And so like for us, we're, we talked about sending people how to clean their own homes. We're actually, we're actually creating some, some blog posts um, where we kind of detailed, I shared some pictures of things we had created in made central. So join made central, join Tom's group in made central and see, I, I post, just search me out. I posted some, some blog posts that we're going to start creating on how to clean. We're going to send all of our customers, the cleaning checklist, um, I am actually going to package and send them um, or even drop them off myself um, uh, a cleaning caddy full of tools and supplies and sell that for, you know, marginal cost. I'm going to need to make some money off of it. But if they have to clean their house for a while, I'm going to I'm going to hustle a little bit. If I can make it more selling cleaning kits to my customers for the next month, I'll do I'll, I'll box stuff up and do that myself. There's all kinds of things. But so we're we're gonna take this time to also create a ton of content for our customers. We're gonna do better life maids at home. My my wife's a lot better looking than me, so she'll be in front of the camera. We'll be talking about fun projects you can do cleaning wise, um, things you can really like take some before pictures of like the kids' Lego room, and then like do like some some stop motion of them picking up their things. Do we run a pretty strict house, and our kids pick up after themselves, and like like even just little rules we have at the dinner table, like. Like you have to make four trips after dinner. You have to make at least four trips of, of stuff. And like like a, a fork does not count as a trip. So like little fun tips of like, you know, ways to make this all less stressful. So again, we could, this could be a whole nother co you know, conversation of things we should be doing during our downtime. Um, but those are, those are some ideas of what I'm gonna spend my time is. And then I'm also gonna work on a lot of processes. They're gonna make my business safer and better when this is over so that we, this is, this is not going to be over when this first sequester is over, right, guys? When this is over, we're going to have to work and live with this. Tom talked about it a little bit. Um, but the first 30 days that they do these shelter in place, it's not going away. It'll, it'll keep coming back, and we're just going to have to figure out what our risk level is that we're going to be able to tolerate as a business and as a society, and, uh, and how do we live and work with this and protect our employees and protect our clients better than we ever have before and we can, we have to be businesses that don't cut corners. We have to be the best. And I think that'd be a great conversation of how we set ourselves up for the other side of this time. You know, what feedback have your customers been giving you for, you know, when they get, when, when you gave them the word that, that you were discontinuing temporary discontinuing service, almost all positive. Although I had one healthcare worker who said that we did it because she was a healthcare worker and we saw her stethoscope and didn't want to serve her even though we had ads out on Facebook that we were giving away 20% off this last week we were open, any frontline healthcare workers or uh, first responders before we shut down. So, you know, she, she seemed to, she, I don't know, she went off the rails. So you'll have those, right? You're, you're going to have people. I, I had her like emailing me and I was so kind and like, I've had this client for seven years. I don't know what happened there, but most were over, overwhelmingly respond, like think responsive to it thinking, that we were doing a socially responsible thing, that we were making a good decision that benefited them and society. When we were down 40%, we could have struggled on and kept making money and, and, and doing things. But I'll tell you what, 
today, I mean, the number of call-outs I had from employees, even just running our last day here, it's going to be a struggle just to get them in the door and make them feel good about it. And I don't want to be in the business of twisting anybody's arms to do this. I know Liz is probably better about the communication side of this. And I've done a good job with that, with our, with our customer or with our employees, but our customers overwhelmingly were very, were very positive on the decision. And I will say this, and I've talked to Tom about this. There's a line on your balance sheet called goodwill, right? It's, it's a made up item, right? We, we, we use it to give our business value. And, um, Right now, I think that line has more value than ever. The goodwill that you actually, you, you come out with on the other side of this through the decisions you make. And um, I don't think you wanna appear reckless right now. I think you wanna appear, if you are gonna continue to operate, you need to be running a tight ship. You need to be like doing things really well, right? I mean, and and again, cause no harm, do no harm. Like the doctors are, are you know, that's their, that's their first thing. You know, before you make a buck, I don't want to kill anyone over 200 bucks, right? Like that's not, that's, that's definitely the way kind of into my decision-making. But if you really feel like you can safely operate, you've got really good processes and procedures in place and that you are confident that what you're doing will cause no harm, then continue. And again, like public spaces, stuff like that, obviously need to be clean. Um, and this will be an ongoing, an ongoing process. This is not going to end in 30 days. So we'll, we'll have to circle back on all this. And, and, and we said that we were discontinuing for two weeks. So we're going to see what happens over the next couple of weeks. And we're prepared to, you know, have it shut down for a longer period of time. If you had to ask me today, I suspect we, we will be for, for a material while more than two weeks. But we all know, you know, the, the data just keeps coming out. And if they come up with some type of study saying that, we really, you know, overestimated how, you know, the spread of, of, of this thing works and, you know, the whole idea of, of you know, you know, vaporizing and, and you know, being able to contract it by, by breathing it in the air is much, uh, you know, overdone and with, with a couple of some precautions, you know, it, it, it's, I mean, I'm making all this up, but I mean, if something like that happened, we might come back and, and tell our clients, okay, well, you know, Two weeks ago, we out of abundance of caution, we made a decision. Here's the most recent data that says maybe it's not as bad as we thought it would be. If you'd like for us to come back, we'd be glad to do it. Yeah, that's good. I think again, staying on top of the data is going to be important and, and, and learning as we go. So yeah, I mean, my my guess is Dana asked when you think you'll truly reopen. My guess is there's a shelter in place order in St. Louis for 30 days. Um, I have exceptions for my commercial employees. I did not seek them for my residential employees. Um, so I'm going to probably go with 30 days in St. Louis, April 22nd would be my reopen date, um, at the minimum uh, and, and really see how, see how that goes. Um, I'm hopeful that that is, uh, that we learn a lot in that time and we learn a lot on how to operate our businesses more safely. And, 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 you know, what I'm really hopeful is, is that the businesses that are up, that are up is going to continue to operate out there. Um, do a good job and, and keep people safe and show that it is that it is fine. But if somebody goes out there and kills somebody, it's going to hurt all of our businesses. If they bring something home to some elderly person and they were reckless. So, you know, the flip side of that is I, I'm worried, too, that, that our industry could be hurt from, you know, the push to consider ourselves essential versus a luxury in, in that sense. Um, that, that's the flip side of the coin. But I I, I can only hope that that actually they show that we're responsible and do a good job and that it doesn't cause any harm and that that they were the guinea pigs for us all, I guess, you know, so. Crystal Ham has a question here. Wants to know, are you requiring employees who were laid off to return all their equipment? Yeah, let me, uh, here, I'm gonna pick up my computer and just kind of show around the place really quick. So yes, so going into, uh, this is my office. We just ran out of storage. I can't tell if we can really tell. Yeah. But, um, you know, in my in my office, uh, we have stored everyone's vacuums. I'm still waiting on a couple people. Um, I took everyone off direct deposit that hasn't given me all their stuff back, and they'll have to come in by Friday to deliver. Um, on this other side, of, well, our other storage room here is really full. I think I'm going to donate some of these gloves that we bought, like tons and tons of. I can't. Yeah, there's stacks of gloves, gloves up there, gloves, <laughs> masks. I'm going to be making some donations to local hospitals uh, with some of this stuff because we're not going to use it 
as quickly as I was imagining. So, uh, you know, everything is laundry is being stored away. Everyone's bottles are put away. So you get the gist. Everything is kind of, you know, stored here. And I did that for the reason that I actually don't want my employees cleaning with my equipment when they're out on their own. Because again, if they want to go clean or do anything else on their own, I just don't want them to end up hurting anybody. Um, so I, you know, I just wanted to take that, those tools away from them so that if they do it, it's on their own. Yeah. We do, uh, we do teams of two company cars and the cars and the equipment and everything winds up at the office at the end of the day. So there was really no uh, equipment to uh, recover. Yeah. The only thing we had is uniforms. Everybody still has their uniforms out there. I'm not worried about uniforms. I mean, it's a t-shirt or, you know, or, or a button down for us and, you know, an apron. You know, I've got some in stock. I guess if I guess if we had to rehire everyone, I, I have about of my forty four employees, I have about seventeen that I'll, I know will come back no matter what happens, um, and that's the core that I can rebuild around. So I'd say identify your 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 key people that you know you can build around, and continue those relationships really closely as best you can um, through this. Even personal phone calls and and staying in touch through this as best you can. Uh, because yeah, I definitely know there are people that, that won't that won't come back. I had a couple email me today, and I, and I tried to tell them like, don't quit your job. Like, but they like they wanted they were adamant they wanted to resign. Like you know like uh, they had another job offer. I'm like, okay, I hope that pans out because the world changed. So somebody quit today and put it in put it in email in a letter form. I'm not gonna fight around employment if it comes to that. But I was it's never a good idea to quit your job in the middle of a global pandemic. So. You know. Um, Chris also wants to know if you removed everybody from your scheduling software. So I think what she's trying to get at, are you laying people off or are you, are you furloughing them? I think that's basically. It's the same. It's the same. It's, I think it's just a different word. A furlough is just a, a furlough is just a, a different, it doesn't really change. So we did a temporary layoff, um, but I didn't give a return date because that gives them the ability to keep claiming unemployment without having to like, you know, go back and forth with, with, with uh, Missouri. So I didn't give a definitive date, but I told them, you know, probably April 22nd would be um, the return date. Um, so again, a plug for Made Central, uh, it makes it really easy to make big scheduling changes all at once. So um, I think last night when no one else was on, I selected a two week period um, and I deselected all my commercial accounts that I didn't want to erase. Um, and I ended up erasing them anyway because I rebuilt new schedules with higher rates for them during this period. But I, so you, so you, basically you can set it up to email them all that you're canceling their jobs and you can change the text of that. And then, um, and then I just, and then it automatically pulls them off the schedule for two weeks um, and cancels and cancels just those jobs, not the rotations. So uh, again, a plug for Made Central. No one's switching software right now. I know, I know that, but um, it really made it very easy to make that change. And anyone that is on Made Central, I can do a demo of how to do that and show you guys. It's really quick. Um, if there's any users, yeah, that, hit them up later. Hit them up later with your sales speak. <laughs> no, no, no. For current users, current users, oh, you. current <laughs> users that are on that know how that don't know how to use that feature. Um, yeah, Tom has no, he's like, I don't even want to think about software right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Matt was telling me this yesterday, and I was like, yeah, that's probably a, a marketing dimension that I didn't consider. You know, we have, the, if you want to, you know, we have the best software out there to close your cleaning business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Matt, it looks like Bridget and Sarah are both saying some help. So maybe go into the Made Central Hub. And make a, I'll make a Loom video or something like that, or, or I can get on okay. his I can get on a, on a meeting with them. It's your entire business with the click of a button. Yes, yes. I, I and and I would strongly suggest made central users that are on there that are going to do this. Do it like after eight o'clock because it's pretty resource intensive. If we all do this at the same time, I'm afraid of the consequences. Oh, I will dim. Well, yeah, yeah. But we have to click around the software for sure. So if you do decide to do this feature, like I, I did it like at like nine o'clock last night and. Um, you know, when I knew there would be no one else looking at looking at things, like I, I figured most of you guys were asleep if you're on the East Coast and and whatnot. So I, I actually am the cause for a couple of the glitches in the software last year for, with a lot of mass things I was doing 
So my apologies for everyone on Made Central for some slowdowns last week. I didn't realize how intensive some of the like the reports and things I was running to try and get ahead of this were. And uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think the system was ever designed for the amount of emails that I'm sending. <laughs> things like that. I see we've got an, a question here that that I want to make sure that that we address. My my longtime friend Bill Gelderman is is on our call and. Uh, he lives in Atlanta, and, and he's one of our, our, our clients there. And he wants to know who's going to clean his bathroom now. And Bill, I know. I know who. It, <laughs> it's a guy that his name has four letters. First letter starts with a B, right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Bill. We'll, we'll do a call, and I'll walk you through the uh, standard operating procedure for that. Although... I imagine in the Marine Corps, you had a little bit of experience with that. Somewhere along the way, you'll just need to, uh, you know, recall. It's like riding a bicycle, ma'am. You can do it. And it's time. And, and Crystal, to your point about having everybody collect their equipment. equipment. Um, and so if you're doing a temporary layoff, is it going to make it seem like it's too, too, too permanent to them? Just tell them that they need to bring it back because you're laying them off so that they can get their unemployment, right? Yeah. And so that's that's the reason why because yeah, it needs to be a real thing. You can't have them have any company resources or being used. I mean, you have to because one of my employees was like, she has like 120 hours of PTO that I somehow like let her accumulate, and she's like, oh, I'll just leave it in there. I was like, I can't. I was like, I got to pay you for it. And, and she's like, why? I was like, because if it's there and they ask me, then you've got to get paid that money. I was like, I can pay you that money over three weeks. I'd rather do that than do it in one big chunk, but I'm going to just pay it to you on this next check. So then you can start getting unemployment quicker and it might actually increase what you get paid. So um, yeah, I mean, every dollar that you owe them when you lay them off, this that's the hard part. If you have like sick and PTO leave, and this is where Tom may like be able to hold over me that my PTO policies are a little generous because I'm feeling them right now. That's what <laughs> it, it, a pinch. It'll 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 all work out on the other side, guys. We've been here for a smidge over an hour, and um, I don't know. We're probably getting to a good point to 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 wrap this up. Any any last thoughts? No, I think we covered a lot of ground. We got more to more to cover on another call, probably. I think there was some other ideas we should we should talk. I know you've got your own plans this week, but there's some there's some things we we can cover to help people for sure. Oh, absolutely. you do want to post Tom post the link to Clean Business Today, where people can go find resources. Uh, yep, 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 yep. We can do that. Oh, and if you notice, I shaved my beard because I had Corona. Corona beard virus anxiety. So, <laughs> a lot of people that have beards are, are clean shaven now. Uh, yeah. I have no idea if that's true, but a couple of people sent me different articles and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not normally like somebody that has anxiety, but this beard is giving me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do see a lot of people playing with their beards. So, so I think that's a good oh, reason to not have that. So, Here's cleaning business today, folks. Um, if you haven't subscribed, you can go over here to the right and just give us your your, your email and, and name, and you'll be getting our newsletter. And we'll be updating you on the coronavirus as, as things develop. Here's our most recent article on it that's uh, a pretty good piece. If you haven't read it, there's some, some stuff there that's... Uh, certainly useful. I encourage you to do that. And our resources, if you go here and type in coronavirus.downloads, and I'll uh, actually paste that down here in the comments, and that'll get you uh, to a, a different place. These are a bunch of downloads. There's some, some material here that Matt's uh, loaned us. Um, some some videos, some examples. Uh, more stuff if you guys want more. I mean, I'm just constantly putting out information and, communi and communicating. Um, go to my blog, too, because the letter for our shutdown, I think, is a pretty good example of, of, 
a letter, and I know that some other people have posted things like you know that are useful that are useful too. Sorry. So um, that'll that'll do it for today. But uh, we'll be back uh, another twenty three hours, and we'll, we'll we'll do it again, and uh, you know get some rest, stay safe, and um, we'll, we'll we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Talk to y'all later. Night. Bye. Bye. Bye.